Welcome back to Trailer Trash Flips. It is Tuesday midday. Typically, and I think I said this in my last video, the orders that I get over the weekend normally ship on Monday. As it turns out, I had some personal things I had to deal with yesterday and I just couldn't get them out or make this video. So I've got nine orders going out today for a total of $129.09. Nine orders is good, but that's also over the remainder of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and so far today. So we're talking about about five days. That's what, about an 1.5 orders per day. I just pulled up my eBay app and I see I just got a neutral feedback. I don't get too uptight about the neutral feedbacks. Although a lot of times I do think they aren't earned. I'll show you right here what it says. It was smaller than it said it would be. It had to be stretched to fit an eight foot pool table. This table has coin slots. I was disappointed, but it works. So this was a pool table cover and I shipped it very recently, probably in a couple videos back. And I don't know much about pool table covers. The buyer said it had to be stretched to fit an eight foot pool table, which I don't know, I guess I would just kind of assume that they're supposed to be stretched to fit tight. I don't know, maybe they just kind of drape over it. They also said their pool table has coin slots, which, I mean, there was nothing in the listing about having coin slots and are all pool tables the same? Do they all have coin slots in the same area? I don't really know. I guess the most concerning part of that is that the buyer said it was smaller than it said it would be. So, I mean, I don't think that was a listing error or anything on my part. I was simply putting what was on the packaging and that it was an eight foot pool table cover. I guess this kind of plays into the whole feedback thing that I was talking about in the last video, where if the buyer is unhappy, why not reach out? Maybe we could have worked something out. I would rather the buyer be happier so that they would leave a positive feedback, especially to counteract my recent negative. I would have probably did a partial refund on this. I don't believe I would have refunded the whole thing. But either way, I am inclined to work with the buyers if they simply send me a message. But I digress. I'm gonna go pull my orders and show you what's sold. In the H2 bin, I sold a wetsuit. And this sold for $30 plus shipping. In the H15 bin, I sold two items. The first is Dr. Killigan's Premium Pantry Moth Traps. There they are, way at the bottom. And these sold for $19.44 plus shipping. And the next item is a three pack of plastic graduated cylinders. I'm gonna grab three of these. And these sold for $10.49 plus shipping. In the M3 bin, I sold some vinyl letters and numbers. Is it just one? Yeah. And these sold for $7.25 plus shipping. In 011, I sold a network Ethernet patch cable 9 pack. And I believe this is them. And these sold for $11.87 plus shipping. In H12, I sold a 31 pack of pool skimmer sock filters. And these sold for $10.46 plus shipping. In H13, I sold some men's hunting gloves. And these sold for $16.77 plus shipping. Back in my eBay room in bin P. Man, why does it always seem like I sell the majority of items out of either A or maybe one of these here that are really hard to get to? But anyway, in bin P, I sold a, and I have to say this correctly, a one-piece outfit for a child. And this sold for... 324 plus shipping. The final item which I grabbed off of one of the shelves that I needed two hands for is an Oster My Blend little mini blender and this sold for 1957 plus shipping. So here are some of the items that are going out today. And first is this little like I said I have to be careful calling this a one piece uh infant's outfit or whatever because I got my very first I guess it was a Vero. I don't rem remember exactly what it was, but 
I either got a Vero or a warning or something on this because you could probably guess I listed it as a onesie and it was very quickly either Vero'd or pulled down or something. So I did learn pretty quick to not use the term onesie with these, but this was a bin store buy from almost from the beginning of me listing items and this was a 50 cent buy. So I didn't make much on it, but one of those things that's been sitting for so long, I'm just glad to have it out of here. For the cylinders, you saw me pull these out of another box. The box came from the bin store. It was supposed to be a box of 10, but they were opened and I think there were eight left in here. So I just kind of lotted these up into smaller lots. And I want to say I probably paid one, maybe $2 for that box. So just selling these first three more than pays for the whole box of them. Dr. Killigan's Pantry Moth Traps. I'm almost positive these were a $1 buy from the bin store. The, the Oster Blender. This came from an estate sale. I got there fairly late on a Sunday and they were just blowing stuff out. I ended up buying a whole ton of stuff for like $7. This wasn't listed when I went and looked at it. So I brought it up there with a whole pile of stuff and and I, like I said, I paid $7 or something, and this was one of the things included. I didn't pay anything for the gloves. They were given to me by my dad, still new with the tags from Cabela's. I don't guess there's a price on these. I don't really know how much gloves like this go for nowadays, but either way, it's 100% profit for those. The wetsuit I had listed for $40, and I sent an offer of $30. Matter of fact, I just did this last night and they bought it and this was a $4 buy from the bin store. The pool skimmer socks were either 50 cents or a dollar from the bin store. The vinyl letters were again, either 50 cents or a dollar. And finally, the Cat5 cables were again, you guessed it, either 50 cents or $1. While I was pulling my orders, my friend Kim called. She was actually on her way to the post office to drop off her orders. And she said that in the same time frame that I did, which was Friday until today, which is Tuesday. She's had a total of, but she actually had 10 orders. She had nine and she got one more order in today. And she's been fairly slow also. Typically I do sell more than her. And I don't know why, because we kind of source the same products. The big exception for her is that she sources more books. She'll spend the time just going over book after book after book. Whereas I don't usually spend that much time. I would say on an average basis, I sell one and a half to two times as much as her. And she has about the same amount of items listed. She was also telling me about a real pain in the butt buyer that she's dealing with right now. He just left her some negative feedback. And this was actually all on him. It wasn't her. I looked at the item she sold and uh, the buyer simply misunderstood what it was because when I read it, it was very clear. I went to some estate sale Sunday, picked up a few things, but I am significantly cutting back on my sourcing. I, I'm pretty sure I already talked about that, but sometimes it's just, you know, it's hard to remember what you talked about in every video, but I am cutting back on my sourcing. I'm still going to go to estate sales because I typically, I'm not coming home with 50 or hundred items from an estate sale. I haven't been going to any garage sales simply because there haven't been very many garage sales. And I'm definitely not going to the bin store very much. And when I do go, I am being extremely selective about what I buy. Not just in terms of quantity, but I'm trying to source more profitable items. The days of me going in and saying, I can buy this for 50 cents and make $10 on it. I think they're probably a thing of the past. I do still have a huge death pile of a lot of those items, but I will list them because I already have them and that money is already spent. I probably won't list everything. Some things are going to get either thrown away, donated or whatever, but a lot of them are still going to get listed whenever I need inventory to list and I'm running out of higher dollar items to list. So let me show you what I picked up from the estate sales. From one estate sale, I picked up these two cookbooks and they're both South Louisiana style cookbooks. I don't even remember if I comped these. A lot of times I don't comp the cookbooks, especially if I know that they are a typical South Louisiana Cajun or something like that themed cookbook. Now they were marked, well, this one was marked five. This one wasn't marked at all and it was 50% off. So I only paid 250 for each of those. I also found this wall brand bullet little trimmer and I almost passed it by. I did look these up 
and it looks like they go for like 60 or 70 brand new so i think this will be probably an easy 25 dollars seller they had it marked 10 i put five into it which is you know i'm really trying hard here i'm really trying to get out of the paying only one or two dollars for things mindset and maybe put a little bit more money into stuff that i think i can make uh that i think i can make a profit on so anyway i did pick that up and it has some big guards here in the bag i'm pretty sure they don't go with that and finally from that estate sale i picked up this neiman marcus bag i don't know when i saw it i just kind of thought of like vans from the 70s with the carpet all on the inside because that's kind of kind of what it looks like i did try to comp this and i didn't see anything like it it looks you know almost looks like it was brand new on the inside they had it marked two dollars two yes yeah, two dollars also so i only had to pay a dollar for it and as i've said a million times for only a dollar i'll almost always take a chance on something the next two estate sales i went to were ran by one estate sale company that was doing estate sales at two houses next to each other so from one of the estate sales i picked up this what is that a kitchen aid blender base and they had it listed for three dollars so i paid a dollar fifty for that and these look like they comped out around 20 to 25 dollars now you've probably noticed that i'm a bit of a cookbook junkie and it's well it's for two reasons number one i cook and i like to i like to collect some cookbooks although i do sell most of the ones that i buy so this rice cooker meals if you saw my video about the cheap ebay booksellers you know that i bought a rice cooker book there so i actually picked this up for myself now if i find this book is worth 20 or 25 dollars which i highly doubt it is i'll sell it but that one is for myself the ones i bought for resale are these three all three louisiana type cookbooks this one i thought this one may be pretty good i could be wrong which hey i'm wrong a lot but this one was marked eight dollars i think they take the tags off there but this one was marked eight dollars so i only had to pay four this one i don't remember oh this one came from the kitchen so it was 250. this one i think this one was marked like ten dollars i think this one of, one of them was marked ten so i ended up having to pay five dollars for this but i think this is going to be a pretty good cookbook here it's very very south louisiana ish but I don't think these cookbooks were too bad of buys either way. From the other estate sale, which was next door, same estate sale company, I actually bought five items. The four you see here, and I also bought a frying pan, which somehow did not make it into my house, and it's still in Kim's vehicle. But nonetheless, the first two were the first season and second season of The Shield, which I loved The Shield. So I'm going to rewatch these. And then I'll sell them even if I don't make much on these. At least I got to watch them. Next was this cookbook, which I bought for myself. It's basically a cookbook where they took pictures and photocopies of other things and kind of compiled them into one cookbook. I don't think this is the type of cookbook that, you know, that I'd be able to see. Well, there may be people who want this. I don't know. But I did buy this uh, just to have for myself for my own collection. And I also found this. And it's Taste, Tales, and Tales with the High Priestess of the Bayou. I tried to comp this book, and I only found a one comp on eBay. It's currently listed, but it's listed for $200. And it's really not even in very good shape. Way, way worse shape than this one. Now, this one is personalized and signed to Kathy and Henry. Uh, it is signed by the author. I don't know if that makes really a big difference or not. Either way, this is apparently a very, very rare cookbook. There's stories in here about South Louisiana type things, recipes for fried alligator, alligator sauce pecan. Just really, really cool as an overall. So I think this one may be able to fetch um, a good bit of money. So we'll see how that goes. So the frying pan that's currently eluding me is a Demire, Demir frying pan. And it looks like they comp pre-owned for between $70 and maybe $100. The estate sale had it priced at $50. After half off, it was $25. And I offered her $20 and she accepted it. But it looks kind of like this. 
and I got to tell you, I I kind of want to keep that that pan, but really I don't need any more pans. I have some pretty decent pans as it is. So, so I guess ultimately I'd rather sell it and make a nice profit on it. Another item I almost forgot about because I had it sitting out to the side was this Sun Vino baby carrier. And this is in pretty good shape. When I found it, it did not have a price tag on it. So I went to the lady that runs the estate sale, which she's probably my favorite out of all the estate sales that I go to. But she said there was a price on it of 12 bucks. It was Sunday. So of course it was half off. So I only had to pay six for this. I think comps are looking pretty decent at around probably $25 or so. Uh, at least that, I think that's what it was whenever I comped it. So, you know, it's an okay buy, nothing spectacular, but there should be a little profit here. It is Thursday. So it's been two days since I filmed the earlier part of this video. And today I have four orders going out for a total of $48.52. I did do another nuclear reset early in the week and since then it showed that my page views and impressions have literally shot through the roof but they haven't they haven't translated into sales so for right now i'm sitting at about 24 dollars per day in sales i have been doing some listing i've sent offers on some items i've lowered the prices on a lot of items in my store and i really don't know what else to do so that's where i'm at with sales right now i want to thank everyone for all the comments regarding my returns situation. There's lots of good advice out there from resellers who are way more experienced than I am. And the reason that I have not turned on returns as of yet was just, I know people personally who they buy a lot of stuff from Amazon, Timu, Shein, um, Walmart, and they're so quick to return it. And I know there's a lot of people out there like that. And I was just hoping that by having no returns accepted, it would keep a lot of those people from just returning things on a whim. But I think it's now the time to go ahead and start accepting returns. And I'm gonna do 30 day buyer paid returns. I do realize that buyers can force INAD returns where I'm paying for the return anyway. I, I get that. And of course I've had those. A lot of the comments made sense about accepting returns, even if it is buyer paid returns, at least that may build some confidence in potential buyers. I won't say that 30 day free returns is completely off the table. If I thought that I needed to do that, I would. But first I'm just gonna do the 30 day buyer pay returns and see how that works out. So thank you to everyone who commented, gave me advice and you know, let me know how that has worked out for you. So let me go pull my four orders and I will show you what's sold. The first item is in bin 02. And a few videos back, I was talking about these totes that I use from Costco. They're like $18 for three of them. Sometimes they're cheaper if they're on sale, but they've been pretty good totes. And I haven't had but one crack so far. And then this happened, but it was totally my fault. I had it sitting on top of the garbage can. I didn't have it sitting properly. It's heavy because there's a bunch of books in here and it's kind of lopsided because all the books are right here. Anyway, it fell and crashed and broke, but totally my fault. So the first item that sold is this Barron's test prep book. And this sold for $15.96 plus shipping. Next in the M5 bin, I sold right here on top too. I sold this, this replacement Nutri Ninja blade. And this sold for $7.25 plus shipping. In the H13 bin, I sold this EMS foot massager. And this sold for $12.36 plus shipping. All right, I'm back in my eBay room looking for an air filter. And it's on, well, I'll just call this the auxiliary shelf, and I cannot find it. And I hate when this happens, and it doesn't happen very often, but I do not see that air filter. By the way, these were the absolute worst buy that I think I've ever made. I bought all these socks, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so for like 50 cents a piece. And I have yet to sell even one pair. And not only do I have these, I've got a whole bunch of them up here. But man, I cannot find that air filter. So you've seen me pull out of those bins before. I have these bins, which look, I'm just be honest with you. Everything on this shelf is unlisted. That's all unlisted stuff. It's been here from the beginning. It's just stuff I never got to. It's just a small part of my death pile, but I don't, yeah, there's nothing, but there's nothing on this shelf listed. So 
I knew it probably wouldn't be here, although I did look here. This shelf, is, I just call it the auxiliary shelf because I never labeled it, so that kind of became the name there. And that's what I had in my custom SKU. But as it turns out, this shelf is called the black shelf because you guessed it, it's a black shelf. Anyway, I mislabeled it and it's down there on the third shelf of the black shelf. So I did find this on the wrong shelf and I'm glad I did because I was already anticipating another negative feedback, but luckily I found it. So all these items came from the bin store and they were all purchased fairly cheap. I'm, I know everybody's tired of me saying 50 cents or a dollar and probably all of these were that price. So on the bright side of my low sales, at least I would have probably a maximum of $4 in cost of goods going out today, which maybe helps offset the low $48 sales. I'm considering maybe doing some whatnot selling. I've got some things around here. Now I do have the socks there. I don't, I don't know if they'll ever sell, but I did see a few other things that maybe I could sell on whatnot, items that are just not moving. I've got some gaming headsets. I think I've got maybe six or eight of them, brand new in the box. They're wired, they're not wireless, but man, I can't give those things away. I've sent offers on them. I've lowered the price. And one thing about them is shipping tends to kill them because they're gonna be two pound shipper. But I've tried to lower the price so that they were still a good deal. And it looks like on Amazon, they're getting more money, but like I said, I can't sell them. So I have some things like that that may be able to sell on whatnot. So I'm considering doing that. I may go ahead and just apply to be a whatnot seller. And at least then if I have the option, if I wanna do it, but I'm heavily considering it. And maybe some of the viewers of the channel can go over there and get some good deals on stuff because these items are not doing me any good to sit here. I would like to move some of that and that would at least give me some more room, which I desperately need. It is Friday, almost 1 p.m. And I was going to end the video I made yesterday and just start a new one, but I ended up having just a couple sales come in. Since then, I've got two orders for a total of $28.87. So I'm going to add them to this video. Before I pull those, I did give eBay a call yesterday evening. And I know that might seem ridiculous to some people, but I didn't expect to get a whole lot of information, but my main motivation for calling them, well, I really had two reasons. One, I really just wanted to make 100% sure there was nothing going on with my account. I would think that if there was something going on, they would have contacted me. I know one time I had to, I had been selling for like six months and I had to re-verify some bank information, even though they had been sending my deposits to that bank account for almost six months. I still had to re-verify, but I did want to make 100% sure that there was just nothing on there. I actually joked with the rep, which was a U.S. rep, by the way, and I think the last, I don't call eBay much, but I think the last four or five times that I called, which I've probably only called half a dozen times, I've gotten USA reps and they're so much better to deal with, but I was joking with her about them shadow banning me and and I, I think she knew i was joking but she was like would you believe that i just got a sale my sales are now up like 50 percent more than they were a couple of minutes ago okay so that makes three sales for today but anyway i was joking with the rep about shadow banning me and the way she said it was funny because she was like Oh no, sir. eBay doesn't do that. <laughs> and it just, it completely sounded so sarcastic. Like almost like she knew that that was maybe a thing, but she couldn't admit it, but she was kind of coming across like she did. And I even said, no, I'm, t I'm completely joking with you. But, um, just the way she said it was funny. But anyway, she said there was no problems with my account based on my experience with calling eBay. They typically don't have any issue handling these small things that come up. A while back, I had an item that I shipped out to a buyer and it went to some kind of, I don't know, some kind of thing at the post office. It's not a PO box. It's some kind of locker or something. And it sat there for however many days the buyer never picked it up. So it ended up coming back to me and I needed to, I wanted to refund him for the item, 
but I didn't want a refund for the shipping, which was 20 something dollars. And because again, because I didn't offer returns, I didn't have that ability. So I had to call in and they handled it, you know, without any problem. So my experience with them handling those issues has always been pretty good. I really didn't expect them to give me very many answers or really probably any answers. And they didn't. She just said that she saw no problems with my account, but if I wanted, she could send over a ticket to the IT department just to make sure that my items are being shown in the search. And I do believe they are being shown because if I go to Google and just take some random listing that I have, I do typically find not all of them, but I do find a lot of them there. Some of them are expired listings from before I reset my store. Some of them are fresh listings. So I don't really think that that is an issue, but she said it wouldn't be any problem to send that over and just make sure. So I did do that. The next thing that I asked about was the negative feedback removal. And I already knew that there was probably no chance that I was going to get that removed from calling into eBay. And unfortunately, that did not get removed. So ultimately, my call really resulted in, I don't think it resulted in anything unless there is a problem in the search with well, maybe not all my items, maybe some of my items, because I mean, I'm getting a few orders, just not a lot. So instead of $28 going out, I'll have $47 going out in sales. So let me go pull those few orders and show you what's sold. Okay, the first item, the one that you just heard the sale come through, is in the 08 bin and is a book deploying edu protocols and this sold for 1886 plus shipping next item is in my cracked out 02 bin and it is a boat transducer mount and this sold for 20 dollars plus shipping back in my ebay room and hiding way in the back corner over by napoleon is the x bin so I'm gonna have to put the camera down to pull that item. And in the X-Bin, I pulled this AutoCraft AC and fuel line disconnect tool, and it sold for $8.87 with free shipping. I picked up the disconnect tool from Ollie's, and I think these were 99 cents. And I did see some sold comps when I bought this, which has been quite some time back. And I wanna say I had two of these, one, I think one sold a long time ago, and this one's been sitting for a while. But if I remember correctly, I only had 99 cents into this and selling it for $8 and some change, not really making too much. The transducer mount for boats came from the bin store and I think I had $2 into those. And the book would have either been 50 cents or $1 at the bin store. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.